Welcome to the Financial Times. I'm here in Beijing in Tiananmen Square with Jamil Andalini, our bureau chief. Behind him is the Great Hall of the People, where the parliament, or what passes for China's parliament, will be holding its first sessions this week. Jamil, please tell us what to expect here this week. Well, basically you have what's called the National People's Congress, which is what passes in China for the House of Commons, if you like to think of it in those terms. And then you also have uh, something called the Chinese People's Political uh, Cons Consultative Congress. And that is pretty much the way you could think of it if you're in Britain is as like kind of like the House of Lords. It's an advisory body which uh, doesn't have any lawmaking power, but which is there to kind of gauge the feeling of, of the people and the masses. And both of them, the, that's what's opening right now. CPPCC is opening as we speak uh, across the Tiananmen Square in the Great Hall of the People. And uh, on Wednesday, in, a, in two days' time, the National People's Congress, the Parliament, which, uh, which does technically have lawmaking uh, rights and powers, but uh, generally just follows what it's told to do by the, uh, by the com ruling Communist Party. So uh, there were a series of reforms that were announced by the leadership at the end of last year. Uh, these reforms will now be implemented by this group of, of delegates. Can you tell us a little bit what the priorities are for this year? Sure. So a lot of the reforms that were announced late last year are still in progress. So many of them won't be showing up on the roster in the in the lawmaking agenda uh, this week or next week. Um, a lot of them are still being hashed out and talked about. But what's really important this week will be the Premier of China, Li Keqiang, will get up and he'll give his, he'll present his work report to the delegates. It's a very symbolic, ceremonial event where he just basically explains what the Communist Party wants them to do and wants uh, the direction that it wants the country to go in. And that's kind of the most uh, important thing. And the, the reforms that we're looking for, uh, particularly in the financial sector, we've got a whole series of reforms which have already started to be announced and rolled out, we may see some movement on that. Things like interest rate liberalization, capital account liberalization. Uh, we may see uh, more involvement of private capital in the, in the financial sector, these private, semi-private banks that are starting to spring up. Um, we're also going to see probably some movement on social issues like the one child policy. That's something that has already started to be reformed in China and we may hear a bit more about that here. Since the announcement, has a lot been achieved already? Has anything been achieved already? Well, particularly on, again, on financial reforms, we've seen a series of things, uh, and small announcements, small incremental steps. But when you put them all together, it does look like China's moving quite quickly to reform the financial sector, for example. There's been less movement, but some talk about state-owned enterprise reform and, uh, and some small signals about that. Um, the, the big sort of reform agenda that, we, that the party unveiled was back in November, so we haven't had a very uh, September, November, so we haven't had that long yet for them to do it. But uh, it seems to be a faster pace than many had expected. Of course, this is taking place after a horrific terrorist attack in Yunnan this, this weekend. Do you think this was time to embarrass the leadership? Clearly, um, the, the attack down in Kunming, allegedly by uh, Uyghur Muslim separatists, clearly it was intended to embarrass the government. It was done to show that uh, the vulnerabilities of the great state of, the, of, of China, um, the People's Republic of China. As you can see around me, I don't know if you can see on the, uh, in the background of the, on the footage, but there's uh, an enormous security presence here in Tiananmen Square, uh, far more than we usually see in most years. You've got uh, paramilitaries, police, and you have even, it looks like some uh, possible military units even uh, around us, many plainclothes police as well. Um, just before we started filming, um, a, a man behind us who, uh, we, we don't know what he'd done, but he was dragged away by the police very aggressively. Uh, the police stopped us from filming, yelled at us, and, uh, and um, you haven't been allowed into the square uh, because for some reason your pass hasn't been prepared. And we're, we're not sure if that's to do with the nervousness about the, uh, about the uh, events of last weekend or, or not. Jamil, thank you very much.